Have you ever looked up at the night sky and watched the stars twinkle? Well, if this sight has filled you with a deep, boiling sense of rage, then you may be an astronomer. The atmospheric distortions that cause these stars to twinkle also plays havoc with the images taken by telescopes, turning a nice, sharp image of Jupiter into a blurry mess. Astronomers would like nothing more than to remove the atmosphere obscuring their precious stars. But seeing as that would wipe out most of the life on Earth, they have to work around it. One way of doing that is to put a telescope, like Hubble, beyond the atmosphere, up in space. Unfortunately, that turns out to be very, very, very expensive. A cheaper way around this is to use a technology called adaptive optics to fix the distortions created by the cursed, life-giving atmosphere. Today, I'm talking with Mason Lamb at the NRC Hertzberg Institute of Astrophysics, who's going to show us how adaptive optics works. Before we get started on the adaptive optics, why do you build it on a small table like this? Ah, uh, so we like to build things on small tables first because uh, the problem with, with building a, a really large scale instrument, like say for the 30 meter telescope or any telescope for that matter, uh, you can't just go out and build it on the telescope. You have to build it first um, at a location such as this one here at the Hertzberg Institute of Astrophysics. Um, and so currently we're going to be building uh, one of those instruments, but you have to kind of uh, build it in a sandbox first on a much smaller scale to show everyone that all your processes, your, your theories, your ideas, your algorithms uh, are going to work. And once you've shown to them and shown to everyone that what you want to do works on a smaller scale, then you take the next step up and work on a bigger scale. And then you can apply that methodology and those tactics and, and build it on a bigger scale so that you, you really know what to handle by the time you go to build it on a telescope. In simple terms, what are adaptive optics? Adaptive optics are the use of mirrors that can change shape to compensate for the distortion in the atmosphere. Now when you go and look outside at night at stars, you see them twinkling. And the twinkling is caused by the, the hot and cold pockets of air high up in the atmosphere uh, moving around each other. And when starlight passes between us and the atmosphere, we see the stars twinkle. Now as astronomers, if we take long exposures of a really faint object, because we like looking at things really far away and faint, um, you, you basically expose uh, this star and it moves around as the star twinkles and you get a much bigger, blurrier ball and you don't get this fine structure of the star that you want to see. So what adaptive optics does is it uses mirrors that can change shape to compensate for the imprint that the atmosphere is making on the light. And it does this at the rate at which the atmosphere is changing, which is uh, on the order of maybe a thousand times per second. So you have to have computers that work really, really hard and fast. How does the telescope know what shape the mirror needs to be in to fix the image? Uh, so we have these things called wavefront sensors. And wavefront sensors essentially um, tell us how distorted the light is or how much that atmosphere is, is inducing an aberration on the star. And then we can use a computer to read that information and then tell the deformal mirror what shape to change to. Uh, there's a variety of different wavefront sensors, uh, but the simplest one is made up of a, a grid of lenses. Uh, and you, you basically send the light through these lenses. And if it's a perfectly uh, non-aberrated system, you'll get a, an evenly spaced grid of light caused by the focusing of, of each of these lenses. And if there is any aberration in the system, it's going to cause these spots to move and deviate from being on a perfect grid. And that's how you can tell how distorted the light is. And how does the mirror change shape? Are there tiny little motors inside or gremlins or what? Yes, that's a very good question. So there's a bunch of different types of mirrors. Um, in this lab alone, we have three different types of mirrors. Um, one of the mirrors that we use is this one here. Uh, and they're called deformable mirrors, remember. And so, so this deformable mirror here, uh, it actually uses um, piezoelectric uh, actuators, which is piezoelectric material. So when you apply uh, a voltage to this material, it either expands or contracts, so it moves in or out, like a piston. And you have a bunch of these pistons glued to the face of the mirror. So how many are there in that mirror? On this mirror here, there's, uh, there's 52 of these pistons glued to the face of this mirror. On something the size of a dime? 
Uh, it's it's about the size of a dime, yeah. Cool. And uh, and then that can range in, in size and shape um, all the way to the point where you get to this mirror here, which is just slightly bigger than this mirror, and it has a thousand actuators. So is that about the size of a nickel or a quarter? Yeah, it's about the size of a quarter, and you have a thousand actuators packed into the size of a quarter, and these actuators, um, they act differently than the actuators here in the sense that they're essentially uh, an array of little tiny drum heads, like little drums, and, and so if you've played the drums before, uh, the membrane of the drum can move up or down. And how this one works is you apply an electrostatic force underneath the drum head, and it will either pull it down or push it out. And that is then glued to the membrane of the mirror, and that's how the mirror changes its shape to whatever you want it to change to. So it's almost like a speaker. It's, it's almost exactly like a speaker, and in fact, Usually when we work in adaptive optics, we use two mirrors. We use one that has less actuators, and that's called the woofer, and we use one with much, much more actuators, and that's called the tweeter. And they work together in tandem, exactly how your, your car stereo speaker woofer-tweeter combination work. That is really cool. Just for a ballpark figure, how much would that mirror with a thousand actuators cost? So this one here cost us more money than, than necessary as they've come down in price over the years. But ballpark kind of figure, you're looking at a couple hundred thousand dollars for, for one of these uh, deformable mirrors. I can see why you made them on a small scale first. Yes, uh, before you want to build a really big one, because all big uh, deformable mirrors cost upwards of millions of dollars, you want to make sure you can do it on a small scale first. So, how does a typical adaptive optics system work in detail, now that, I've, now that I've described these parts? Well, essentially, you start off with a light source here, and that light source will then pass through the atmosphere. So the light source is like a star in space, and the atmosp atmosphere here is represented by what's called a phase screen, where essentially we've just etched the uh, surface of the atmosphere, more or less, into this glass screen and we can rotate the screen and it will simulate the atmosphere moving because the atmosphere moves of course um, and of course it, it moves on on the scales of a uh, thousand times per second or so so then the light continues on and goes off of this lens here and so the lights kind of a point source here and then now it's kind of a collimated beam and the light then goes through to a deformable mirror here and this is the mirror I described earlier that has a thousand actuators packed into a small square. And it can change shape. And this shape will change to compensate for the uh, aberrations induced by the phase screen. The light will then move along to another lens here. And then it hits this mirror and goes through this lens here. And then the beam is split in two parts by this beam cube here. One arm of the beam goes to the wavefront sensor, which is here, and the other arm of the beam goes to the science camera here, where we can see how good of a correction we make of our science target. There is a little uh, lens grid here and a camera, and the information from that camera gets sent to a computer, and the computer then tells the deformable mirror what shape to change to, and then as a metric to see how well you did, you can look at your science camera and your star should look less blurry than it did before. There should be less twinkling of your star at each point of the correction. And it does this in a closed loop form. So eventually what you have is a star that doesn't twinkle at all. Thanks for watching. And a special thanks to Mason for taking the time to explain some of his research. You can learn more about the research done at the Hertzberg Institute of Astrophysics on their website. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more physics -y awesomeness if you haven't already. And check us out on Facebook.